on this side, we have the comic book. On that side, we have the movie. It's time to compare the two. It's Comic Comparison Universe. Let's discuss it. What's up, Universe, and welcome back to the web's first must-see comic nerd culture show. Welcome to Comic Universe, guys. I'm your host, as always, C-Dubs, and as you can see, I'm riding solo on this video, guys. And welcome back to the second episode of Comic Book Comparisons. Now, this is going to be a episode of Comic Book Comparisons, but it's also going to be a pseudo-review for both the comic book and the movie, if you will, or graphic novel in this sense. Now, if you don't know what comic book comparison is, it's where we take a particular medium from comic books or graphic novels and compare it to other source material, essentially, most likely a cartoon, a cartoon movie or TV show, if you will, and just compare the two. Um, but also, I'm going to be trying to give you guys a, as much of a spoiler-free video as I can, but warning, there will be some spoilers in this, just so that I can talk about the actual heart of this story, essentially. So, the movie and the book, first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about how in today's day and age, it's so easy for us just to go, the book was better. You know, it has more time to develop the character 90% of the time, this to be true. Okay, probably 99% of the time. But in recent memory, we have managed to get a few movies to be made that are as equal as equal can get to a book that has all the time to expand on a character, if you will. Um, you have your equal fan bases. You have, for instance, your Harry Potters. You know, the book clearly has its ravenous fan base, but the movie has the, a ravenous fan base as well. And they're both pretty neck and neck, if you ask me, as well as your Lord of the Rings, you know. They're both pretty neck and neck. Uh, you also have your, you know, for the most part, your Jurassic Park. Same thing, pretty neck and neck. Um, but overall, the general consensus is that the book is better. Well, I'm here to tell you guys that first and foremost, right off the bat, elephant in the room, the book and the movie, I can't determine which is better. They are both great. They both hit me in the feels. They both made me think about life. They made me think about me. They made me think about how my friends deal with things. Both did the exact same thing to me, and I cannot choose one over the other. Now, are there, there are things that I think the com the novel does better and there are definitely things that I think the movie does better. Now, let's start off with the story. The story follows the fi um a, a fifth grader uh by the name of Barbara Thorson. She is uh she lives in a small town in New Jersey. Uh she goes to school like every, you know, every day with just like you and I did um or do and she has no friends and she has a really hard life back at home. Now, not in terms of your traditional hard life when you say that, you know, abusive father. In fact, the parents don't seem to be really involved at all. And you'll find out why as you watch or read the comic. Um, it's really just her siblings for the most part throughout the story. And you slowly start to find out what exactly it is that's affecting her. Now, Barbara is not afraid of nothing. She's not afraid of no one. Um, adults, bullies, it doesn't matter. She slaps a teacher uh, I should say she slaps a uh, a guidance counselor or a shrink, if you will. She basically, at one point in time, tells the bully that's bullying her, she goes, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to do things to you that would make God cry. Like, that's some intense crap. When the bully's bullying her and she's like, you're sitting at my desk, you owe me a toll, and she holds out her hand for some money, she spits in her hand. I'm like, this I loved. Barbara Thorson in both versions. They are spot on. Hats off to the writer who wrote the character like that and hats off to the actress who portrayed her in the film because she is one of the greatest, most awesome like teenagers ever portrayed anywhere. I loved it, okay? And maybe she's not a teenager. Maybe she's more like 12, 11 years old, something like that, but she was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, Barbara does have a secret, though. However, she does, in her leisure time, defend her town against giants. She kills giants, like she says. She hunts them, you know, she tracks them, she hunts them, she kills them. Okay, she protects her town on a monthly basis, as she tells everybody. Um, how does she do this? 
with her magical warhammer, okay, that she keeps inside of her pocketbook. And when she pulls it out, it is called Gillespie. It is a powerful warhammer with the, essentially, it's a storm bringer, a storm breaker, if you will. It brings down the lightning just like Thor's hammer, and it is like four times the size of her puny little body. But she is a beast with it, let me mind you, especially in the comic book. Now, really quick, guys, I'm just going to kind of just go a little more into review sections, okay, and then I'll kind of go into comparisons. Now, with the comic, or with the graphic novel, I should say, um, it is, a again, a graphic novel that was written by Kelly and Ken Nervais. Um, it was nominated for an Eisner Award, which, if you don't know, is the highest honor you can get uh, in a creative, uh, creative achievement, if you will. Um, so this is a really well-written story, if you will. Um, as the story goes on, we find out that there is something that Barbara is deathly afraid of, and it actually lives upstairs in her house. And we slowly start to find out what it is upstairs that she's dealing with. And when we do find out, I got to tell you personally, since I'm someone who just recently had to deal with this same issue not too long ago, I, I, my heart went out to her. I, I felt every emotion she has in the book, in the movie. I was just, I was right there and almost cried, okay? Uh, just because I've been in her shoes, again, not too long ago. Now, uh, once we do find out what it is she's fighting, she goes on to tell, you know, that, you know, there's giants, there's harbingers, there's titans, and she gets a new friend that she explains all of this lore to, and her friend doesn't know, quite know what, what to make of her, um, doesn't know if she is crazy or if she's honestly dealing with something and needs help, okay, but their friendship grows over time. And in the film, it's really shown really well in a very short amount of time on how, you know, you could really have someone's back and be their friend, okay, but then do things that on the outside looking in, you know, or in the heat of the moment may seem like you're betraying them, okay, but in all honesty, you know, you're trying to reach out and help them. Uh, you had the best intentions, whatever the case may be. Now, in the film, the film was uh, originally released in 2017 in short, um, kind of here and there throughout the, the country, if you will. Um, but its big theatrical release was in 2018. It was directed by Anderson Walters, and it is starring Zoe Zadana, uh, Emogen, I think that's how you say her name, Emogen Poots, Jennifer Ellis, and uh, Madison Wolfie. Um, Zoe kills it in this movie. I, I was right there with her, too. Um, in the film, she's actually trying to reach out to Barbara to try to find out what's wrong with her, um, how, why, what, you know, why she's so segregated from everyone and everything, why she's so, why she snaps at teachers, why she just, she, and she explains, she's like, I just don't have time for stupid people. I tend to be mean to stupid people because they're just wasting my time. My time is valuable. I'm saving this, the, the damn town time and time again, and you don't hear me bragging about it, but I need to do my job. And while Zoe's just reaching deeper and deeper trying to figure out what's wrong with her, she ends up getting smacked right off the bat. And I'm just thinking, like, oh, my God, could you imagine in fifth grade if you had smacked a teacher, what would the, the repercussions that would have come down on you? And I was just like, oh, my God. I, I just – it blew my mind. And it was just really, really good. Uh, I think this movie went really under the radar, to be honest with you guys. Uh, the, the, the tomato score guys, Rotten Tomatoes, got it as 78% fresh. Uh, the audience, basically, they give it an 81. Metacritic's got it at a 74, and the audience rating is a 6.7. Me, I would give it a solid 4 stars out of 5 all day long in terms of the film. And in the book, I say it's a definite buy. You know, uh, you I buy the trade. They do come in individuals as well, but I would buy the trade, guys. Get out there and read this book. Um, and I would say it really doesn't matter if you see the movie first or read the book first because they're both so good. There's a lot of shot for shot and scene for scene and dialogue for dialogue. And I think that this is one of those cases, again, where I think regardless of which side do you fall on, both sides are right. The movie's just as good as the book. The book is just as good as the movie. And I'm not going to spoil the actual twist at the end. 
But when you do find out what she's dealing with, I'm telling you, if you have any kind of a heart, okay, it's going to grow three sizes that day. I promise you that. All right, universe. So that's going to do it for this review slash comic book comparison. And guys, I want to know if you've seen the book or if, or if you've seen the movie or read the book at all. If not, have I convinced you to go out and do so? Because I promise you, this is a good, good time. You can watch it with the family. You can watch it by yourself. It's really awesome. Lots of good lore. Great special effects in the movie. Uh, the book has got an anime manga feel. It's a really indie book, so there's no colors to it. It's all black and white sketchbook style. Um, so it has a unique flavor, but promise you, now the book can be a little dialogue heavy in the beginning. Um, one thing I will say that's a little, might put you off on the book, is that there's a little, not a little, there's a few times, maybe a little more than a few times as well, of womanizing, if you will, where like a lot of putting down on women and sexism and things to that nature, like girls can't play baseball, girls uh, shouldn't play D Dungeons and Dragons, that type of stuff, and there's a lot of cursing and a few racial slurs in the book which are not in the movie, and I think that's actually a strong part of the film it's not that i'm uh, approved I, I curse you know you've heard it here in comic universe guys you've heard us do it um but again the book was just a little weird just because you know how young she actually is and and it seemed a little more mean-hearted uh where you didn't need it in the movie to be mean-hearted you got the understanding that she is lonely okay that she is on a mission she's in her own head you get that in the film. So uh, where it did service and it was good in the book, but I can see some people just having a little bit of an issue with that, um, especially if you're a female. Uh, you know, reading that may kind of irk you a little bit, if you will. Um, but overall, I, again, I did enjoy both of them. And just keep in mind that the book was written by both a man and a, a woman at the same time. It was a couple. All right, guys, so there is women influence in it. So... Alright guys, so let us know if you've read it, let us know if you've seen it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on this video, guys. Don't forget to smack that like button like you mean it, boys and girls. Click it, let us know we're doing a good job here, guys. And don't forget to tell a friend, get them to sign up, join the notification squad, guys. The bigger we get, the better it is for everybody. Trust me on that. And until next time, universe, I'm C-Dubs, and I'll see you in the universe. Peace.